the minutes if I'd like to provide an amendment. Would I do that now? Yeah. And when, just, when we discuss the attachment yeah. number two, item number three, we're not there yet, I guess. We sorry. just... Well, I'm just, sorry. What are they you? They just passed. It just passed. We, we just, just approved. It just approved both of the them. Monthly yeah. minutes. And yeah. The special board meeting. Yes. They were both approved. Okay. Well, well it wasn't clear. I guess. Yeah. I. I think I. Well, the motion I was we to were... approve the minutes of both meetings. May I motion what? to revisit attachment two? Attachment two. Item number three in our agenda. What? I thought we were on item number two in our agenda. Just what are we trying right. to change? Um, I would like there to be a revision that in the middle of the page it says trustee comments and questions. Attorney Ritzman answered trustee questions regarding the topics discussed at the meeting. And I would love there to be um, an asterisk to the attachments and for the attachments to be labeled attachment one and attachment two. One being the bulleted topics and two being open meeting definition. Uh, if you were to pick up these minutes, I don't think you'd realize, oh, there were two additional pages to the special meeting. But they will generally they're be- attached. They're attached and they will be stapled when they go in the binder. So I don't think that that's necessary. And those binders that you see, you'll have all the attachments that relate to it in the official binder. Well, if you feel it's a clarification, then I'm happy to second the motion. The footer of the document also lists the attachments. Okay, but are, they're not, I guess, you're right, I guess they're not um, meeting agenda. Okay, um, I, I think it still could be clarified. They're attached here. But, but they are attached they are in the attached minutes. In the minutes, they're right next and labeled to it. though, and attachment as like attachment one and attachment two. Yeah. I don't think that's. I don't necessary. think that's necessary. Okay. Well, well, I, I wanted to be sure. I, you so, know, I, I guess I'm a big a proponent of being, um, you know, if someone were to someone were to just jump in and not be familiar with these documents that you know that you're getting to. I, I didn't realize that the attached had that, but the titles of the pages, I think, would have been helpful to have. Okay. Um, thank you. Yep. Thanks. There is no presentation. There's no one here for public comment. Treasurer's report, trustee. Rogers. Okay. This, the principal source of money in the month of June was $49,000 from the Kenilworth contract. Uh, we also received 15,000 plus in general interest, general fund interest, 5,866 in miscellaneous income, and 3,500 in gifts and donations. Um, you'll note that we received no tax dollars. That's not unusual. The tax bills have just been sent, and those monies will be paid uh, or will begin receiving those monies as tax bills are paid. I believe they're due August 1st. August so. 1st with no penalty. Right. Um, we, um, now it's not quite true that we've completed the year because the audit incorporates some additional costs that may not have been in this report. But we currently are at 95% of the budgeted amount for general fund expenses. Uh, there will be some additional costs that will be added based on completion of financial reports. Um, so we're, we're actually very close to the total that was budgeted for last year. Um, there isn't anything else extraordinary in the financial report, but I would point out, because a question was asked about it, is that all of our CD interest rates have been part of the monthly financial report for years and are in this case as well. So any questions about what interest rates we're drawing on our CDs uh, 
is in the record as a part of these financial reports. There are some other investment accounts that uh, we don't have, do not have that level of detail for. Uh, for example, the state does not provide us with as much detail about those invested funds as we maintain for ourselves for this ladder of CDs. Um, but we, you, we report the information that is uh, available and provided, um, and the um, state funds, let me see if I can find, Illinois funds is on the second page of the June 30th uh, assets and liabilities on page two of these materials. So um, if we want to pursue further detail, uh, then we can schedule a finance committee meeting or include that discussion in a finance committee meeting. Um, uh, but the information that was requested, for the most part, is provided as a part of our monthly reporting. So it's a matter of determining or defining what other issues would be appropriate for us to be prepared to discuss. Uh, but a lot of the information that was asked for is already here. And so. Um Thank you. The, the CDs are, the general fund is best thought of, correct me if I'm wrong, as essentially our, you know, operating surplus that we don't spend since they're locked away in CDs. So that's sort of outside of our special reserve fund slash capital fund, this $7.2 million in CDs, that is sort of extra operating money that we have in the bank? Well, I would express it a little bit differently. Yeah. The ladder is designed so that they mature as we expect that we might have need for them. Okay. If we don't need them, they get rolled over into new CDs or new investments. Mm -hmm. But they're deliberately set up so that if, for example, uh, for some reason, and this did happen, mm -hmm. Uh, several years ago, tax bills went out so late that we had to draw on our reserve funds in order to meet payroll. Now, that's probably not going to happen this year because tax bills are not so late, but there was a year in which tax bills didn't go out until November. And so, and that so in that case, we drew on our operating fund reserves mm -hmm. in order to cover operating expenses. That's part of the reason why those funds are there. We can't use reserve funds for operating expenses, but we can use what we have invested in CDs for operating expenses as they roll, as they mature. Yeah. And so the latter is set up so that they mature at different dates in order to cover contingencies that could occur but that we have no control over. So, you know, you're correct that the money is separate from the reserve fund, mm -hmm. but we have had occasion when we needed to draw on it. And about how much do we draw? I have no memory of the detail because that was many years ago. The bottom line is we don't determine, we don't control when the tax bills are sent or how quickly they pay the money to us. Sure. And so the reserve in the general fund helps us bridge those. In many situations, school districts are in the position of having to sell bonds or tax anticipation warrants, which mm -hmm. is a form of bonds, yeah. in order to cover those kinds of operating expenses if, the, if they don't receive their tax payments uh, and when they plan to. We don't have that vulnerability because we have some extra money available to cover those contingencies. In truth, what that does is it lowers our interest costs because we're earning interest on these monies if we don't need them, rather than paying interest in order to meet operating expenses. But in your um, distinguished and long tenure, you can recall one circumstance where we had to draw. No, there were more. There were multiple circumstances. There were. There was a period of several years uh -huh. when the tax bills were going out late. Mm -hmm. The latest I recall 
was tax bills that went out on November 1st. Instead of By statute, they're supposed to go out at the, you know, at and now they're yeah. supposed to be out now and due in August. Right. But if there's a big assessment cycle, they don't always meet that. So it could be two or three or four months of expenses we might need to cover. It's possible. We've had that experience in the past. Yeah. This gives us a way of handling that without having to sell tax anticipation warrants. Sure. And that saves us money. Right. And because we're earning money instead of spending it on interest. If, if it should occur, and if it's a total of four months and a $5 million budget, then maybe we're talking about a million dollars. Perhaps. So it's an open question, do we need six million or five million or seven million? Mm -hmm. If a million dollars is sort of the outside circumstance of the assessors really late in the year. Well, there also could be circumstances which, again, we can't anticipate um, that could compel expenditures that we couldn't and you know couldn't plan for specifically so rather than guessing and trying to cut that finally it has been our practice over the years to use the reserves as contingency to cover unexpected events and circumstances uh, it's served us well. We have not had debt since we retired the 1986 bonds in 2006. Sure. But to date, the unexpected events have been the assessor being late with the tax bills and maybe on the outside a million dollars of operating expenses that we've got to somehow cover. And gratefully, we don't have to go borrow mm -hmm. money. But it's an, I think it's fair to say it's an open question. Do we need a million? Do we need two? Do we need three? Do we need four? Well, the general advice is that you want to have half a year at least. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very conservative. You know, the... Um, Generally a year. It's not... It's a good mm -hmm. policy to have a year. Operating with less than half a year becomes a risk. Wow. So, you know, it's a... It's simply, you know, it's, it's good financial management and to be prepared for the unexpected. We had a case, for example, in which we had to spend $120,000 on repairs mm -hmm. um, because of a flood problem in which water was passing through the parking lot into and through the vault, electrical vault, downstairs. But yeah. wouldn't that be handled by our insurance? Eventually it was, hour. but the repairs had to be paid for by us up front. The insurance pays months later. They don't pay at the moment that you need oh. to make the repairs. Sure, and you, but we would have had those funds from our insurance eventually. Eventually, but you need to get the repair done before it causes a real serious problem. Similarly, we had two patrons at separate occasions drive into the building. Those repairs had to be made. It took almost a year for the insurance to get to resolve those issues. We made the repairs immediately. You know, we had a staff member sitting downstairs with a car coming toward her. You know, down well, in the one of the things I think that we're going to discuss at the next finance committee meeting, there are three items. One, what should the pol review the financial policy, looking mm -hmm. at the reserves. Mm -hmm. Two, what should we do with the endowment fund ba balance. And the third was basically what, what should be reported, because I think you, in terms of, your, in regard to what you sent to Anthony, in terms yeah. of what's missing from here that you're not getting. Oh, I'm sure it's all there. I just need a lot of help understanding it. Okay. Right. So would you I'm sure it's all reported. I just yeah. it takes me a while to help people walk me through it. I, I would I, I need some time, additional time too. I I, I can I guess empathize with that. Yeah, no, I'm sure it's all there. Would I you just, mind, Dr. Johnson, repeat what was the question? Was there an email that you asked? Oh yeah, I um uh, I'm just um trying to get as much interest as we can since we have so much money in the bank and um I uh, had asked, um, oh, it's an open meeting. We can talk about it. Great. So I just, uh, I think I just asked staff, um, um, I guess Roger found out about it too, which is great. Um, well, I was asked about it, what oh. to do next. Yeah, I mean, that's great. I, I don't have any problem with it. But um, I was sort of uh, trying to be particular about uh, not emailing everybody. 
but um, I just wanted to make sure we were maxing out interest because we have so mm -hmm. much money in the bank. Income. Right. So I find there's some treasure program that the state treasurer has that seemed to be, uh, you know, a good one. So I asked whether they were aware of it and they liked it and what they thought about it. Okay. Um, and so I guess we've got some money in it. And then we, uh, I'm, just, I'm trying to understand a little bit. Um, uh, so on this one, a follow-up. So like our day-to-day -day checking account, is that the, um, what do you call it? The deposit, the deposit account, account and sort of the operating checking, is that sort of like our regular checking account, basically? So well, those are operating yeah. funds. Yeah. Right, but that's outside of the seven million that are in general fund CDs. There's right. an additional two, you know, two million dollars and change that's just sort of in the, our regular checking account. In a money market fund. Is it a money market fund? That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all. You, you know, know, and that's and that's to be in compliance with our policy. And our policy states that we need to ensure that our funds are safe, liquid, and legal.